Hello and welcome to today's program at AUC TV. Today, our guest is one of our own, Ms. Catherine Vanderbilt, who is both an instructor and graduate service librarian. Today, we'll be discussing the different services that AUC Library can offer to both students and faculty members. Thank you for being with us today, Ms. Catherine. Thank you so much for having me. So could you please tell me the unique services that the AUC Library can offer both to students and faculty members? Yes, um, this is something of a long list, so I'll uh, start at the beginning. Uh, so we have a large uh, library collection um, of both print and online resources that are made available for free for students while they're here um, and also for faculty members as well. Uh, so while you're a student or a faculty member at AUC Library, you never have to pay for any resources when it comes to books or journal articles or newspaper articles, any other types of sources that you might need for your research. We have a very large collection, both, as I said, in print and online. Um, and also, if we don't have that article or that book chapter, whatever you need in our collection, we can get it for you through an interlibrary loan service, which is also free for undergraduate students, graduate students, and faculty members. Um, so that is a big part of what we have. Um, we have, I believe, what is the largest collection of resources uh, in the English language, academic resources in the English language in Egypt. Um, and we have quite a few Arabic language and French language, German, many other languages as well. Uh, so that's one part. One part. Um, we also offer um, a lot of assistance for students in um, their research needs and also their technology needs in the library. We have a help desk uh, where students can come at any time. It's open from, I think, 9 a.m. until almost 10 p.m. Um, where students can come in if they have any kinds of technical problems, they can bring in their laptops and get things fixed. Um, and also there at that desk, we can help you out with uh, your research needs. So if you are working on a paper or are trying to decide what it is that you want to focus on while you're a student here, come talk to us and we can help recommend some resources for you. We can show you how to use our library databases. We subscribe to over 100 databases in the library that can get you the full text of articles and books and many other resources uh, for you as well. And we can also strategize about how to approach a research topic. Um, which I know a lot of students can struggle with. Uh, so we're here to help you out with those kinds of things. Um, d sorry, carry on. Uh, go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, so we offer those kinds of one-on-one -on -one services. And we also offer classroom sessions as well. Faculty can request um, student, a, a librarian such as myself to uh, come into a class and to give students a tutorial about how to use resources and tell them more about what's available. I know a lot of graduate students are very busy and so yeah. you're often only on campus at the time when your class is taking place. So if that's the case, I'm happy. Uh, I personally, as graduate services librarian, yeah. I'm here a lot of evenings. So I often go into classes and, you know, tell students about what resources that we have and you know we have conversations in that class where I answer questions and you know help students with their individual research topics during class time. The other day when I went to the library I noticed there is a, a class for visually impaired students. How do you implement that? Yeah, uh, so we do have a classroom um, inside the library for visually impaired students. So in this room we have um, uh, a program, I believe it's called JAWS, uh, and several other programs for students with disabilities that will help them, um, particularly visually impaired students, mm -hmm. programs that will read, um, read web pages and read books and uh, journal articles out loud to students and give them uh, other types of assistance so they can navigate quickly through a source or through a web page. Uh, so we uh, we don't uh, have any classes just specifically for um, visually impaired students, but the visually impaired students are always welcome to come ha ask us at the help desk for access to this classroom that has access to um, these res to these uh, software resources, and uh, we can help them use those in an efficient way. Speaking of help desk, there are three floors in the library, like there's the plaza, the first floor, the second, and the rare collection. Um, yes. rare collection. 
So like, are you saying there is librarian on each floor of the library? So as, um, that's actually a very good question. Um, you can find us on several floors, not every single floor. Uh, most of us in my department, I'm part of the research and information services department. So basically we're there available for students all the time. We're the, we're the instructors and uh, we're the people who help you if you have an individual question. Um, so we're mostly located on the plaza level. Uh, there's always one of us at the help desk at any time between I think 9 a.m. and 7 p.m. Uh, and uh, we, there are several of our offices are in the back um, on that same floor. Uh, it's a bit hard to explain and we're working on adding better signage so that you can find us. Uh, but we are there. Um, yeah, we're, course, uh, yeah. Lately, I went to a library like I think last month or something. I was looking for a book. So it was on the first floor. Mm -hmm. So I had to go round and round and round. There wasn't any librarian to help me to find some books. Yeah. So, so there, there's, there's not anyone on the first floor. No, it was around like 4 to 5 p.m. Yeah. So. Um, so on the first floor, generally, no, there's no one there. Um, on the second floor, one of my colleagues, he has a room actually in the graduate um, commons area that's up on the second floor. He's our um, Middle East studies and Islamic studies specialist, and his room is up there, so you can ask him for assistance as well. Uh, so if you do have trouble finding a book, and I know call numbers can be confusing the yeah. first time that you try to yeah. try to look for them, you can always head back down to the plaza level and ask someone at the help desk, and we can come up with you and uh, help you find that text. Speaking of call numbers, how do you, like, when you go on the website, how do you know which floor to go to like which and where the book is located exactly yeah this is also something that we're trying to improve this service to get a little bit more information on the website but what I do is I'll write down the call number or take a take a picture of the call number and I'll always check the location and the status of the book as well mm -hmm. um, location it should say something like main library if it's in our first and second floor collections mm -hmm. but it might also say something like SPCL which means special collections, so it's up on the third floor. Okay. Um, and uh, there are other, occasionally you might see different things like something's on reserve, so then it would be held at the plaza level at the reserves desk mm -hmm. um, for students who need to share one book in one class um, and they don't want someone checking it out for 28 days and then no one else can get access to it. Um, so to first check the location, and if the status says check shelf, then you know it's waiting for you. If it says due and then a particular date, then it means someone else has the book um, checked out. Um, so once you have that call number, call numbers begin with one, two, or three letters, and those letters correspond to a subject. Um, this is not anything anyone needs to memorize, but for librarians like me, um, these uh, subjects uh, so these letters refer to a subject. For example, Q is for the science field, oh. uh, or N is for fine arts. Um, I think uh, L is for education, for example. Um, and then these can get more specific by adding an extra letter. So I think QA is for math, QB is for astronomy, those kinds of things. So well, that's how they're organized. That. And you're not meant to, actually. Yeah. It's just a way of classification. Uh, it's because, you know, if you go into a bookstore, often you can see the nonfiction section and it's maybe one wall of books, you yeah. know, maybe a few, uh, a few dozen books. But I kind of prefer but that. We've got, but we have such a huge collection I in know, our I library. I find it so much easier when everything is labeled mm -hmm. like, okay, this is for media, this is for science, so I don't have to go all around looking for Q or P yeah. or S. Yeah. It's simply because we have a really large collection. And yeah. so if I would send you to go look for the architecture section, I'd be sending you to go skim through 500 mm -hmm. books and yeah. you don't have time for that. So call numbers are specific. We think of them as a home address of a book where it's actually located in the, in the library. Mm -hmm. So um, based, on those, based on those first letters, that's how you know which floor to go to in the library. And there are signs everywhere, particularly close to the elevator and the stairs, that will tell you where to go for those um, call numbers. So I know off the top of my head because I work there, um, but on the first floor we have call numbers that begin A through HE, and on the second floor we've got HF through Z. Of course, you don't need to remember this because you can see a sign whenever you walk toward the elevator. 
Um, and then from there, as soon as you get up to that floor, there will be more signs that will point you to the different directions that you should turn. Should I go left or should I go right to find, I just did that backwards, okay. <laughs> uh, to go find this book. Um, and then each one of our shelves has a range of call numbers that appear on it. So the first time or two that you have to go find a book, it can be quite confusing. So we encourage you to come ask us at the help desk. Say, I have this call number and I've never found a book in our collection before. Please, can you help me? And we will walk upstairs with you and show you how it all works. That happened the, to me once. Yeah. So I had the call number from the website. Uh -huh. And then I've, like for days I was looking for that book. It wasn't even there. Like there's a space for it, but there's a space where the book was before. So I came down to the plaza floor. There was mm -hmm. a guy on reserve or something. So he came up with me and he couldn't find the book. And he was like, the book is missing. I've, has that ever happened before? Yes. And it does happen occasionally. Um, this happens often uh, and we tell students please not to do this but sometimes they still do um, is they don't want to go through the trouble of checking out a book uh, but they can sometimes hide a book uh, and say I need to come back and use this tomorrow or next week I'll put it somewhere else that only I know where it is this is a very rude thing to do for all the other people who are looking for that book yeah. so if that happens to you and I'm sorry that it did that one time um, if this happens to you, you can go to the circulation desk and you can tell them this book that I'm looking for is not on the shelf. And then we will do a search and we'll try to search all the way throughout the library to see if we can find it. And do you ever find it? Yes, we do sometimes. Another option could be that it is a book that was just very recently returned. So maybe the day or the day before someone gave it back to the library and it's still on our sorting shelves and just hasn't made it up yet to the shelf. So that's another reason to go to the circulation desk because that's the first place that we check. When we find it, as long as you leave us your name, mm -hmm. uh, we will put it on hold for you at the circulation desk and send you an email, say that it's now available and you can come pick it up. Well, I hope to find the book I'm looking for. Yes, I hope so too. <laughs> Thank you for being with us today, Ms. Van Der Thank you so much. Today we come to an end of our program. Next week, tune in and we'll be discussing with our guest, Mrs. Noel Neal, the Associate Vice President for Camper Service, where she will shed light on why she decided to ban homemade food on International Day. This is ACTV. Thank you for watching and good night.